So we have just had the Horses Inside Out conference and what a weekend it was. One of the key messages, I think the takeaway from the conference was all about the importance as, of working as part of a team. And every single horse has a, a team of professionals that help to support him, support him. And many of you, I think, have met my horse Toby before and uh, it's important that the professionals all come together and work together to help support the horse and make sure that they've got the best performance possible and I'm really lucky today to be joined by David Kempsell from Well Saddles who uh, helps look after um, my horses in terms of regular saddle fit and that's I think one of the first and really important things and many of you that follow me um, and know all about the anatomy of the horse. Well, know how I talk about the horse's back changing shape, both with movement, but also over time. So it's really important that we have a regular saddle fit. So I'm pleased that Dave's back again. Been many times before, but thank you so much for coming. So um, we're gonna be looking at Toby, and it's been a while. Yeah. He's lost weight since you last saw him. So wow. yeah. what, are you, what are the things that you're looking at? Because I want to try and share with some of our viewers um, some of the things that they perhaps look out for to know maybe when it's time for, a saddle, for their next saddle fit. Yeah. Any top tips for looking at uh, what, what they should be looking for? Well, first off, we should be really uh, putting the saddle on, running our hand underneath the saddle, preferably actually put the saddle on, no saddle cloth, get rid of your stirrups, girth it up, and then just look, stand back and look at how the saddle's sitting on the horse's back, whether the actual midpoint of the seat looks level. Yeah. Run your hand down the front of the saddle. It should feel as if there's a constant even pressure down the points of the tree, so yeah. either side on the shoulder. And how often do you feel that that changes? I mean, both left to right, oh. and when you go to see horses, what, every God. three to six months? I don't think three to six months, if I'm honest with you, is long enough. Right. Uh, sorry, is short Short enough, enough yes, yeah. Um, really and truthfully, um, if you have a cold snap, your horse can literally drop a head plate size in a week. Yeah. I've had horses, young horses, for instance, that have gone through three head plate sizes, and that's our head plates, which are actually yeah. wider spaced yeah. in three weeks. So three head plates, so that's a head plate a week. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that I really like about Wow Saddles, because we, we know how much our uh, horses' backs change shape, both in terms of you know, weights through the seasons, symmetry, uh, and with the work that we do. Uh, and I think whatever saddle you're using, the adjustability is, is really important. But that's the great thing about the Wow Saddle, is that there's so many adjustable features, both for the rider from stirrup position, seat position, uh, and for the horse. Yes, who is, the horse at the moment is demanding a bit of attention, aren't you, Toby? So um, let's get started with Toby and have a look at his mm -hmm. back and, and see what we think. So thinking about the anatomy for a moment, we've got the thoracic vertebrae in this section, and then we come into the lumbar vertebrae. So we want to be able to find that last 18th vertebrae, and we know that the ribs attach in to the thoracic vertebrae, but how do we find that exact point between the thoracic and the lumbar vertebrae? We could try feeling the tops and counting, but that can be really quite difficult. There's an easier way of doing it. And that's quite simply to find the horse's last rib. So if you come forward from the whirl and run your hand forward to find that last rib and then follow it up. And about this point here, the, the rib delves in horizontally to get to the thoracic vertebrae themselves. But at that point there, if you then go straight up, you get to that point, the, the, basically the end of the thoracic vertebrae, the beginning of the lumbar vertebrae. And actually there's quite a mechanical difference between these points. Here we've got the transverse processes and if you press on the musculature here, it'll feel quite different. And under here, of course, we have the ribs. So you press here and you get a different feel. There's a bit of a spring of a rib cage. So that's why Dave was talking about going to the, to the 18th rib. So, um, Looking at the symmetry of this section is quite important. Right, so if we take our pencils, our biros, in this case I'm using a couple of uh, 
screwdriver bits. And you tape and, them together with insulation tape. Yeah, that? just yeah. so we make a joint in the middle. And what we're going to do, we're going to lay this on the 18th rib. Now, obviously, we need our horse standing up reasonably square. Roughly so, square, oh, oh, I thought it's going to do it for us for a minute. Come on in. Yes. Yes, good boy. And we lay that there. And if we view, with the, with the joint obviously in the middle of the spine, if we view that now from over the croup, it will give us a really good indication of the plane that the, the rib cage on the right and the left is actually sitting. And the muscles on top of it. Effectively, yes. yeah, that's what we, yeah. That's what we're really looking at. Mm. And obviously, then we can see if you like, which way his back is biased and which way he was encouraged that saddle to slide. Yeah, because this is a really easy way yeah. anyone can do this just to find the symmetry of the horse's back. Exactly. But we yeah. need them to be standing roughly square yeah. and, um, and then maybe yeah. look at them from behind as well. Exactly. Let's, Let's do, do that. that. So we're going to take our pens or pencils or whatever, put the tape together. We're going to put our joint in the middle of the spine and we're going to look at how these lie, and we should see that this is lying more at an angle to the right than the left. The left, left side looks flatter than the right side. So this is an indication that the rib cage, if you like, is rolled to the right hand side. And if we go to the scapulars at the front, and we find the most, we palpate for the most caudal edge of the scapula, just ask him to stand square. Good boy. Yeah. Right, so here we are, and if Gillian does the other side, yeah. and we come up vertical, and we've got... I'm about that much in front of yeah. where you are. Yeah. Okay, so the scapula on the left-hand side is further back, and effectively is more intrusive on the saddle, and so is going to be pushing more on the saddle, whereas the right shoulder is effectively going to have a bit of a gap in front of the saddle. It's an amazing the amount of clients that turn around to me and say, oh look, there's plenty of room on the right hand side, this is lovely for my horse, but it's tight on the left. Well actually, the tight one is the correct one. The right one is saying, plenty of room here, come on in, which just twists the whole saddle to the right. Yeah. So we actually want those shoulders to be like a buffer to hold the saddle in place almost. Right, well, back in um, November, 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 end of November, we had Toby in this head plate. Yeah. And basically, you can see a much bigger radius at the top and also a much wider angle. And now he's slimmed down. Mm. He's pulled up through that rib yeah, cage. That, that's not just going to be about fat, is it? No, no, this no. This is the fact he's come back into work. He's been recruiting his thoracic sling, his abdominal mm. muscles, so he's going to be a changing shape up there. A good indicator as well is looking at the, uh, the height of the wither above the top of the scapula yes. because that gives you a really good indication about how, how much your horse has actually pulled up through the thoracic I, sling. I've got a webinar actually where understanding and assessing your horse's posture where I really go into detail about the anatomy of the thoracic sling and how to assess that position. So that's, that's definitely one of them. And he's, he's nicely up there at the moment. Yes. So that could explain the difference in those head plates. Now, that's just one part of the story though, because yes, this bit of the horse's back has changed, but we've also got to assess how that horse is carrying his rib cage between his forelimbs and hind limbs, and the attitude, if you like, to, walk, to the ground. Mm -hmm. Because if that attitude starts to change, yes, okay. it'll either tip you forward or tip you back. Yeah. And, okay, you may think a few millimetres, three or four millimetres may, may not make a huge difference. It actually makes a massive difference to where the forces, your weight and your force goes through the horse. And whether your horse is starting to work on the forehand, starts grabbing the bit, evading. And it's going to make a big difference to their body as well. Oh, yeah. Because uh, you might feel a, a bit of a tip down, but actually, if the horse, if the angle of the vertebrae are going slightly down more, that's going to put a lot more weight going forwards through the thoracic sling muscles. The base of the neck's going to come forward and down, and it's going to then affect the outline as well. 
And I think, um, yeah, the more we can learn about how all that works and those relationships, it is complicated. Yes. The more we can learn about it, the better we're going to be able to help them not just perform well, but last longer. <laughs> That's I, the thing, comfortable and hopefully reduce the risk of injury. I think we can sum it up by basically saying that if, if your horse is working well, then expect it to change shape in reasonably quick order. Yeah, because we're talking November, December, January, February. Mm. So three, it is just over three months, so mm. it's not very long, and that's a significant change. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he has, as I say, he was eating a lot more. It yeah. was summer, there yeah, was a lot yeah. more grass, he wasn't doing very much, and now he's come back into work. So that is a significant change. I'm gonna show you our saddle gauge, which Great. will then show you, if you like, a more overall view of how that saddle's sitting. Great. So this is an updated model compared yep. to the saddle gauge that I've, I've got. Um, so what exactly is it doing? It's going to measure the widths, front to back balance. How does it work? Basically, we've sectioned the saddle into three parts, yes? Now, the center of, of any saddle, roughly all saddles sit um, a certain distance away, around about sort of three quarters of an inch away from your horse's back. That's the sort of thickness. And you want of, that gap because yeah. those spinous processes along the exactly. top. You don't want any pressure on but those. But you don't want to feel miles away either. No. But then if you think of that like a pivot point, your horse's back could go flat back and straight to the, to the ground. And then you would need a bigger, if you like, wedged panel to support the tree and support the saddle behind so you sit in balance. Otherwise, effectively, it's going to go backwards. So you've got the adjustment at the back for different heights of gusset. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then also, conversely, at the front, you've got horses with huge great hollows or basically really quite round, really well muscled. Can I just make the point? We don't measure fat, yes? Fat is a, is a very sort of movable substance. And we basically, what we're trying to do is measure the musculature under the fat. So if, you, if you've got a more a horse that's carrying a lot of fat over the shoulder. Fat pads. Yeah, those and fat pads. classically here, aren't they? Yeah. And also in this area. But they can spread up and can, yes. sit around that area. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is, is get the the angle of the musculature at this point, mm -hmm. not the, the fat, which could actually be almost like domed over the top. Right. But your saddle's gonna sink into that. Well, we've not got that problem with Toby before. No, we haven't. So, no, uh, no, you've another, done a good there's job. There's another story there, isn't there? There's another message about yes. obesity in horses. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so you've got the ability to move the gussets and for all three sections, yes. the width here, yep. and I can see you can move that. So there's, this is really, really adjustable, isn't it? Yes. Which is a reflection of how many different shaped backs do we get? Yes. So many different shapes. And so if we put this on, this is actually Toby's new shape. And then what I'll do is I'll put the old one on and you can see how out of balance this was. Yeah. And, and how the, much his back shapes changed. Exactly. Yeah. And this is, this is why it's, it's such a good indicator. If you, if you stand your horse up on level ground and put this on, with your horse standing four square, this is a balance point. This is basically where I would expect the saddle to be sitting so that it would give you, if you like, a level plat platform to sit on. Yep. So if we put this on and we get him reasonably square. I'm standing up square. This one, Toby. There we go. There we go, perfect. And you, you'll see your balance point, yeah? Right in the middle. Right in the middle. So if that was tipped, if that was forward, yep. that would For almost, instance. that would indicate that the saddle's tipping forward yeah. and everything is gonna shunt down. It's not gonna help a horse's posture. No. So our old head plate size. So this fitted him in November. Exactly. Yeah, just over three months ago. So now let's see how out of balance our saddle is. So we're gonna put that back on and you can see it's dived forward. It actually wants to lift the back of the saddle up. And basically, he would start, the symptoms you, you would be feeling is exactly the same as we were talking before. Slightly grabbing the bit, slightly running forward, not, not engaging as much, not sitting as much as maybe we would like. And you'd be working hard with your legs and wondering, come on, why aren't you up underneath me? 
He is, he is he's quite an active forward horse anyway. Mm. Um, but definitely the more tending to want to go onto the forehand has been a bit of a pattern. And it's, um, it's interesting how just that slight change can, is going to make hopefully such a, a big difference and, is difference and is part of this whole horse approach. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to uh, getting his saddle rebalanced and uh, seeing a difference that it makes. Good. So here's our saddle now with a new head plate and you can see that it looks like it's nicely in contact behind and if you feel the front as well you yeah so this is now adjusted for his back shape yeah and if we look at that sort of it looks hor it looks horizontal it looks in balance and presumably yeah that's it's not it, tipping it's uh, yeah. yeah it should good. just feel solid it should just feel like it's it's almost stuck to his back yeah, so a good balanced saddle, it's not just about the rider though, it's about the horse's body, isn't it? Exactly. And getting these details just right is so important for keeping them healthy. So let's see how he goes. Good. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video and there's some tips there that can help you and your horse. Dave, thank you so much for joining me and for sorting out Toby's saddle. I look forward to seeing you again in uh, the next three months. Bye. Bye, -bye.